You know, if you were to follow a busy doctor as he makes his daily round of calls, you'd find yourself having a mighty busy time keeping up with him. Time out for many men of medicine usually means just long enough to enjoy a cigarette. And because they know what a pleasure it is to smoke a mild, good-tasting cigarette, they're particular about the brand they choose. In a repeated national survey, doctors in all branches of medicine, doctors in all parts of the country were asked, what cigarette do you smoke, doctor? Once again, the brand named most was Camel. Yes, according to this repeated nationwide survey, more doctors smoke Camels than any other cigarette. Why not change to Camels for the next 30 days and see what a difference it makes in your smoking enjoyment? See how Camels agree with your throat. See how mild and good tasting a cigarette can be. Throughout history, unethical corporations have used deceit and propaganda campaigns to manipulate consumers to buy products. Such marketing might help a corporation's bottom line, but it is often at the expense of people's health and happiness. Corporations attach status to their products, trying to convince consumers that others will think more of them if they are seen using their products. Consumers' perception of the value of a product increases, which allows corporations to raise prices and increase profits. Marketing to children is seen by corporations as an investment. The younger a child is, the more impressionable and easily manipulated a child is and the more likely the child will become a status-seeking adult consumer. However, the more we seek material goods, the less happy we have become. Psychologist Alan D. Kanner notes that materialism and consumerism result in what he calls narcissistic wounding of children. They become convinced that they are inferior if they don't have an endless array of new products. Psychologist Tim Kasser argues that advertising executives are essentially manipulating children to believe in the capitalist message, when all the evidence shows that believing in that message is bad for people. That's unethical. Like, I've had the same fat white computer monitor on my desk for five years. My coworker just got a new computer. She has a flat, shiny, sleek monitor. It matches her computer, it matches her phone, even her pen stand. She looks like she's driving in Spaceship Central, and I, I look like I've got a washing machine on my desk. Fashion is another prime example of this. Have you ever wondered why women's shoe heels go from fat one year to skinny the next to fat to skinny? It's not because there's some debate about which heel structure is the most healthy for women's feet. It's because wearing fat heels in a skinny heel year shows everybody that you haven't contributed to that era as recently, so you're not as valuable as that person in skinny heels next to you, or more likely in some ad. It's to keep us buying new shoes. Advertisements and media in general plays a big role in this. Each of us in the US is targeted with over 3,000 advertisements a day. We see more advertisements in one year than people 50 years ago saw in a lifetime. And if you think about it, what's the point of an ad except to make us unhappy with what we have? So 3,000 times a day, we're told our hair is wrong, our skin is wrong, our clothes are wrong, our furniture is wrong, our car is wrong, we are wrong, but it can all be made right if we just go shopping. Media also helps by hiding all of this and all of this. So the only part of the materials economy we see is the shopping. The extraction, production, and disposal all happens outside of our field of vision. So in the US, we have more stuff than ever before. But polls show that our national happiness is actually declining. Our national happiness peaked in the 1950s, the same time that this consumption mania exploded. Hmm, interesting coincidence. I think I know why. We have more stuff, but we have less time for the things that really make us happy. Friends, family, leisure time. We're working harder than ever. Some analysts say we have less leisure time than any time since feudal society. And do you know what the two main activities are that we do with the scant leisure time we have? Watch TV and shop. In the US, we spend three to four times as many hours shopping as our counterparts in Europe do. So we're in this ridiculous situation where we go to work, maybe two jobs even, and we come home and we're exhausted. So we plop down on our new couch and watch TV, and the commercials tell us, you suck. So you gotta go to the mall to buy something to feel better, and then you gotta go to work more to pay for the stuff you just bought. So you come home and you're more tired, so you sit down and you watch more TV, and it tells you to go to the mall again, and we're on this crazy work, watch, spend treadmill, and we could just stop. Marketing to children has become more and more a part of corporate strategy. According to the Campaign for a Commercial-Free Childhood, companies spent $17 billion marketing to children in 2006, a 17,000% increase over the $100 million spent in 1983. 
Licensed cartoon characters are now used on products in every category. It is difficult to walk down an aisle in a retail store and not see products that are being marketed to children. Childhood culture has changed dramatically. Kids, this is a toy you've got to have. Look at the fun Debbie and Andy are having with these realistic ride -em toys. Although it's true there was advertising to children back in the 1950s, the 1960s, even in the 70s, the amount of it was very confined in comparison to today. You want to get a slinky. From the time children come into the world, everyone's trying to make them a consumer. Kids are being marketed to through brand licensing, through product placement, through viral marketing, marketing in schools. We're going to get new equipment and stuff, and the McDonald's people are going to give us money. There's DVDs, there's video games, there's the internet, there are iPods, there are cell phones where you can download video. Watch videos, catch cast interviews, interact with a favorite wildcat. There's now adver books and there are adver songs. Not just ads, not just games, they're adver games. Hotels are marketing to kids and, and car companies are marketing to kids, even airlines, you know, are marketing to kids. Sending one lucky winner to Hawaii, courtesy of Hawaiian Airlines. Kids have far more influence today and it adds up to about a trillion dollars every year. That's a big business. What we have is the rise of 360 degree immersive marketing where they try and get around the child at every aspect, at every avenue. And they go into supermarkets with them and film exactly how they look at a product, pick it up, put it back down, the way they move around a supermarket. They film them on the playground. They film them in school. They film them eating breakfast. They film them going into their closet and deciding what to wear. What are the things that you need um, that aren't in here? I need a lot they of They film them talking to their friends. They organize little friendship circles and film what they're doing. They even follow them into the bathroom. It's um, creepy. It's just absolutely creepy. Their goal is to insinuate their brands into the fabric of children's lives. Can I help you? Yeah, here to see this? Go ahead. So the philosophy becomes cradle to grave. Let's get to them early. Let's get to them often. Let's get to them as many places as we can get them. And our goal is not just to sell them products and services, but to turn them into lifelong consumers. We're creating a future generation of super consumers. I want more. That's the basic consumer identity. It's shallow, it's about me, it's about me now, and it's about me and these things. They're at the time in their life when they're forming kind of all their values and attitudes. They're in the formative stages. Should I impress myself sometimes? There's really a clear, very extreme division between what boys learn and what girls learn. Boys are tough, strong, ready to fight. And girls, they need to be pretty, sexy, and how they look determines their value. It objectifies both of them. I mean, where did she find that outfit? Like, ugly are us? <laughs> More like ugly are her. <laughs> Pretty. I love us. We need, in a proactive, forward-looking way as a society to say, how is this changing us? How is this changing our environment? How is this changing our society? And do we want this? We need to look at this as a systemic problem, look at this as a societal and a cultural problem, and say, we need to protect children from corporate marketing. We're the only industrialized country in the world that really doesn't have a policy about this. What does that mean for our future, for our well-being, and for their well-being? One in three children born in the year 2000 will develop diabetes. Children and a high blood pressure. Obesity. Type 2 diabetes. Antidepressants for children. Attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. ADHD. There is going to be a health care crisis, a, a concrete health care crisis. Life expectancy of kids today will be shorter than that of their parents. The first such decline in modern times. At what point should children and families take precedence over corporate profits. We have become a country that places a lower priority on our children's emotional, cognitive, social, even spiritual development than it does on training them 
to be little consumers. This is a lot more than about selling products and services. This is about the direction in which we are going as a culture, as a society, and as human beings. As advertising budgets have increased in an effort to manipulate children, so has the amount children spend. Unfortunately, marketing to children works. Children in 2006 spent $199 billion on products, which is nearly 125 times the amount they spent in 1989. It is especially prevalent and effective within the grocery industry. To make matters worse, most of the marketing dollars targeting children are used to sell extremely unhealthy products. Parents are concerned that this campaign is largely responsible for the alarming increase in obesity among our children, and they should be very concerned. To coincide with the focus on marketing unhealthy products to children, our obesity rates have skyrocketed. We at Moms believe that even though using licensed cartoon characters to market healthy products might make children more healthy, the ends do not justify the means. Public health lawyer Michelle Simon says it's time we stopped fretting over nutrition standards for marketing to kids and start working on a new strategy to eliminate all food marketing to young children, period. It's immoral and unethical to exploit young children's emotional vulnerabilities. It doesn't matter if it's Happy Meals or spinach. Young children under the age of 12 do not have the cognitive capacity to even understand how marketing works. Deceptive marketing is not based on the health of the product in question, so why would it matter how many grams of sugar Lucky Charms contains? They're after your children and grandchildren more than ever before. Corporations are spending nearly $17 billion a year trying to sell their products to our kids. And with good reason. Kids 8 to 12 spend $30 billion a year of their own money. That's about $1,500 a child. And they influence another $150 billion in spending by their parents. Kids are an easy target for advertisers. By age two, the average child is watching an hour and a half of TV every day. And movie stars like Spider-Man and Shrek are becoming pitchmen, too. What's the impact of this on our children? Tonight, we begin a series we're calling Gotta Have It, The Hard Sell to Kids. Kid, what's up with you? Let's get up and play. The partnership looked good on paper. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services teaming up with DreamWorks Animation to use the wildly popular movie character Shrek to get kids off the couch. Get up and play an hour a day. Ouch! But beyond the public service, the studio's also going after promotion through tie-ins with over 70 food products, some healthy, some junk, an irony not lost on one late-night TV show. That's why Shrek gets an additional tip on my hat for finding other ways to spread his message of health through joint ventures with Snickers, Pop-Tarts, Skittles, Cheetos. But it's no laughing matter to Dr. Susan Lin, a psychologist and co-founder of the Campaign for a Commercial-Free Childhood. She thinks Shrek's public service ads should be pulled. What's wrong with using Shrek to encourage kids to exercise? It seems pretty noble to me. It's incredibly hypocritical. Using Shrek to promote exercise on the one hand and pitch for junk food on another hand is emblematic of the ways that the food industry, the advertising industry, and in this instance, the government, are actually selling kids out. Hey, boys and girls, it's Kelly here. From Hummers and Happy Meals to American Express gift cards just for teens, today, more than ever, kids are inundated with advertising, some that targets even the youngest children. The zero to three market, how much money does that market represent to corporate America? It's a $20 billion market. Susan Gregory Thomas is an investigative journalist and author of the book, Bye Bye Baby. She says Generation X parents who sat their newborns in front of TVs hoping to make them geniuses only turned them into consumers. The only thing that they were getting was how to recognize characters. It's Dora. It's Elmo. It's Poe. The only other scenario in which they're going to encounter these characters is in a scenario in which that character is trying to sell them something. Backpacks, band-aids, toothbrushes. And as they grow up, they're getting hooked up to technology that makes them even easier targets for marketers looking to tap the family checkbook. Increasingly, we're seeing kids influence uh, family restaurants, family vacations. We even have research showing that more and more kids are influencing the decision on the family car and the family home. 
Isn't it up to parents, Dr. Lynn, to help their children become discriminating consumers? It's unfair and, and naive to expect that parents on their own are going to be able to do a great job of coping with this. They need help. They need help from the government. Iowa Senator Tom Harkin agrees. He's proposed a bill that would give the Federal Trade Commission the authority to restrict unfair advertising to children. Right now, the Federal Trade Commission has more authority to regulate advertising to a parent than it does to a child. That doesn't make any sense. So you see this as a huge, huge issue with far-reaching tentacles. Advertising and marketing is a factor in childhood obesity, in eating disorders, precocious irresponsible sexuality, youth violence, underage drinking, underage tobacco use. And critics warn, as it's turning our kids into mini shopaholics, it's teaching them the wrong values, that it's not about who you are, but what you have. We are pioneers at Moms. We have been the first grocery store chain to eliminate plastic grocery bags, to sell only sustainable seafood, to stop selling bottled water, and to offset the carbon used for our customer shopping trips to and from Moms. Moms was the top 10 user in the U.S. of wind power in 2005 when we launched our environmental restoration initiative. And Moms is yet again the first. The first to remove products from our shelves that market to children. Others take notice. We bring these issues into the forefront of the grocery industry. Somebody has to have the courage to take action. Others will eventually follow. Where there's big money at stake, people will fight you. And when you take a stand, others join you. And we have allies. We are not the only ones who are taking action. The backlash against marketing to children is gaining momentum. Susan Lynn from the Campaign for a Commercial Free Childhood states, We've been waiting a long time for a company like yours to take this on, and we will be delighted to explore how to work with you on this campaign. Gandhi once said, First they ignore you, then they ridicule, then they fight you, and then we win.